Good morning. I'm Dr. Joe Flanagan at the Houston Zoo Veterinary Hospital. Today we're going to be looking at a few sea turtles. Uh, we help with uh, sea turtle rehabilitation and re release, um, helping save animals in the wild. Today we have um, two turtles that were brought up by one of our partners in Galveston, the Texas Center for Gulf, the Gulf Center for Sea Turtle Research, um, who transported the animals to the hospital for us to look at. Um, the first one we're going to look at this morning is a Kemp's Ridley, which is the rarest sea turtle, but the most common one that we actually see in the Texas area. The reason we see so many is because their nesting beach is near, uh, it's in South, it's in North Mexico, and there's some that actually nest in Texas. But we are in their development habitat, and we frequently get young Kemp's Ridleys that are caught by fishermen while they're trying to catch fish along the Gulf Coast. Um, this turtle, in fact, was caught on a hook on Sunday, and the hook was removed by our partners down in Galveston. And today we're going to make sure, often what we've learned um, when we have a turtle that's caught on a hook and line, that if they were eating bait at a fishing pier, they may have actually ingested more than one bait or more than one hook prior to the one that they are called in about. So we will routinely check them over uh, before we allow release to make sure that they don't have anything else going on. Um, the most frequent offender was a turtle that was caught on a hook and line. That hook was removed, but it had three other hooks in it when we took our x-ray. So we want to definitely make sure that this guy is clear. We do an initial screen with a uh, metal detector. Uh, but that's not 100% precise, and because we have the opportunity here, we can do this exam on this little guy today. So again, this is sort of the size of Kemp's Ridley that we see um, on our upper coast. Um, I like to get down so that I can be level with them. And hold on, look them over. So this guy has a little bit of algae on his shell which sometimes indicates that they're not as active as a normal healthy turtle would be. Often, um, actually the turtle's shell is very sensitive. It's not a rock, it's, very, it's live tissue, just like your fingernails. It's keratin, which is your fingernail type tissue, laying straight over bone, so they can actually feel that. Um, when they have algae or anything growing on their shell, they'll actually sometimes get underneath rocks or structures and try and scratch it and itch it off. So, Again, this is a, a juvenile Kemp's Ridley. They normally will grow to about 100 pounds. This guy is just probably eight, seven or eight at this point. Um, looking at him, he's not, his nares, his nostrils are clear. He's got his left eye closed there because we're looking at him. Um, do you have him, Katie? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm going to try and take a peek at his eyes here, and hopefully he won't squint for us. Uh, generally hook and line turtles are healthy. Um, they just have found a place where the buffet is open and they will uh, take shrimp or squid or fish off of a hook. Sometimes they'll take the, the bait, sometimes they'll take the bait and the hook. And when that happens, uh, we feel it's better in line with their long-term health to remove the hook. Um, so his eyes look great. Again, often these guys aren't have any other um, health problems, but we look them over, um, doing an exam, trying to make sure their joints are working the way they're supposed to. There's no swellings. They've got all their parts. We find a lot of turtles have had a history of trauma. Um, most likely a lot of it happens when they're juveniles and they're just hatching. Um, going down to the beach, we, we see animals that have lost the tips of their flippers, possibly from crabs or birds that try and attack them and eat them. Um, this guy is in great shape. Um, oops. Let's turn him over, look at his plastron. He's got, again, a little bit of algae and junk um, here, but everything else looks really good. So typically, again, we'll, um, after doing a physical exam, we'll take a radiograph to look and make sure that the lungs look good, 
and there's um, sometimes we see how much food they've been eating lately we will put the animal on the cassette and the technicians will take the radiograph we all will leave the room so that we minimize our radiation exposure so we're just going to jump out into the hallway one two three Okay, let's head back on in. Had so many advances in our ability to take care of animals over the, the several years. Look at that. This guy has a hook that we didn't know was there. So this guy has actually a treble hook, which is um, definitely one that we're going to need to remove from him. So this turtle is going to have um, an anesthetic event this morning. Wow, okay. So we are gonna start with this. Um, I will go grab the anesthetic agents um, and be right back. Do, we, do you have a current weight on this guy? No. Did you guys get a weight while I'm getting my... I have 3.7 kilograms. Okay, 3.7. Let's go ahead and weigh it today and make sure. Okay, thank you. So 3.7? 3.4. Today, okay. So, so what we're gonna do um, when we try and remove fish hooks from a turtle's mouth or neck in this case, we need to anesthetize them because we want the turtle not to feel any additional pain or distress. And we also want for our own safety to not have our fingers bit because they're not usually happy about us working with them. So we give a combination of anesthetic agents to um, reduce the total amount of each one and allow them to um, be sort of not there for the procedure. And what we're going to use on this guy is our some meds that are commonly used in uh, veterinary medicine, ketamine and dexmedetomidine. And we're going to go ahead with an IV administration. So let me see. Katie, could you draw up um, 30 of ketamine? And I will draw up the dexmedetomidine. So it's 100 mg per mil. And 0.2, so we're going to go with. So, well, one of the things that um, most important is if you see a turtle on the beach, you need to call 1-866-TURTLE-5, which is a phone number that is uh, that will get you to a phone tree, and you'll then be directed to the, the number that will get you the a person to come and show up. Turtles on the beach are either sick or they're nesting or they just hatched. And we want to know about all of those things, so call that number. Um, but what every one of us can do in our everyday lives is reduce our use of plastics. Um, if you do use plastic, it's a, it's a reasonable thing to do. We have plastics in our life. Dispose of it properly or reuse, recycle whenever you can. Uh, minimize um, run off into of, of things like chemicals. Don't use lawn fertilizers that will run off into the ditch and into the street and into the bay. Um, oil changes, that type of thing. Don't spill oil. We are a very big city and we have a very industrial area. There's a lot of threats to sea turtles 
just by being alive, but each one of us, if we take one or two small steps, will make a big difference for turtles. So let me see here. My, my calculations I need. Um, sorry to be a little dead air here. Um, and you have my, I mean, let's draw that up into there and I'll mix the two together. So it's getting 0.1 milligram of dexmedetomidine and 30 milligrams of ketamine. Do we have a little alcohol wipe that we can do? So our goal then is to give this intravenously and sometimes it's magic and we get it right away and sometimes it's a little more difficult, so we'll see how we do. Um, I don't think so. For viewers that may be just joining, do you mind reminding people where we're at and what's so, going on this morning? All right, well, this is, um, I'm Dr. Joe Flanagan at the Houston Zoo, and we are working on a Kemp's Ridley sea turtle this morning that was brought up by a volunteer for our, with our partner from the Gulf Center for Sea Turtle Research. And right now we're trying to find a vein on this turtle to give it an IV. We just discovered that it has a fish hook in its, in its gullet and we need to have access to that. Yeah, Katie, let's go ahead and, oh. Okay, so now we're in a vein and we're gonna give an anesthetic and that stings a little bit. And it will take a few minutes for this to take effect. And while that's happening, um, we feel it's very important to remove fish hooks. Um, some people will cut, cut the line and turn animals loose, fish or turtles. That may end well, it may not end well. We know for sure though, if we remove the hook, it will end better. So in this case, we gave this drug IV. It still takes a few minutes to take effect. Um, but as it does, we will um, get out our box of tricks and our headlamp um, to try and see if we can remove that hook without having to do surgery. Um, let me. So this was a surprise to us today. And we have a number of instruments that we use in various scenarios and often we work our way through more than one. Um, let's see here. This might, light might be a little harsh for us. Yeah, if we can make the table higher, that would be good. Either that or we can put it on top of the box get the lid for the box and he's still still not deep enough for our anesthetic to be uh, working yet so I'm just gonna see first if we can see it in there So let's move him forward a little bit because it's right on his. Okay. Not seeing it. Yeah. Okay, he needs a few more minutes. Um, this could actually end up taking maybe a half hour or more. So we may not be able to finish showing this whole episode we might have to do an update tomorrow um, with our status anyhow this is um, a very typical scenario where like i say we the hook was removed there was a metal detector used but it didn't find a hook um, and that's why we want to go ahead and and do a recheck whenever we can um, once this hook is removed we'll hold on to the turtle it'll get some pain medication as well as antibiotics for a few weeks and when he is 
healthy and healed and ready to go, he'll be released back into the Gulf. Um, it's one of my greatest pleasures to be able to physically take care of wildlife and then return them to the wild. And um, part of that joy is, is the physical act of doing it, but also sharing with people what they can do to themselves. <clears throat> so, and I, we appreciate all of our viewers and when remember whenever you come to the zoo you are helping save animals in the wild and you all can take personal action every day to save turtles birds and other wildlife in your own actions thanks So we have a question about tagging turtles before they're returned to the wild. All turtles that are released do get um, a tag of some sort. Some of them, again, the Gulf Center is an amazing new facility that will be um, doing a lot of research on turtles. When they're released, some of them will actually get satellite tags so that we can follow where the turtles, that, uh, the re researchers at A&M can follow where the turtles go and what habitats they are using so that we understand what threats there are and where our animals at, are at greatest risk. This year, we're actually seeing a very high number of large loggerhead sea turtles. It happens every spring that we see some. This year we're seeing more and they're very thin, debilitated and anemic. We don't know why, we've worked with a pathologist who came over from Florida to um, perform post-mortem examinations and try and identify the, the reason. Um, so far, we don't have any significant results other than that they're consistently in very poor condition. We have some in the hospital right now. We're giving them vitamins, antibiotics, um, iron, helping them get better and they're all responding so far. All right, and I wanna thank you again.